All who are thirsty, come to the waters, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come and drink with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Again, welcome to our daily Mass at Holy Cross, and a welcome to our Holy Cross parishioners that watch this Mass daily. And we also want to extend our welcome to those who are not members of our parish at Holy Cross here in Omaha. We want you to know that you're part of our community when we come together to celebrate this Eucharist. And again, a reminder of Holy Cross parishioners that your name is in this booklet right now. Every one of the people who belong to Holy Cross, your name is here on the altar, that we are in union with each other. And as we celebrate this Mass together, it's not the same as being in church together, but it's a way that we can celebrate together through this wonderful um, technology. And we ask the Lord to help us to be aware of his presence and his mercy. You were sent to heal those who are sorry for their sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. May the vulnerable, venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the Paschal Mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> The first reading is from the book of Ezekiel. <clears throat> the angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the table, t temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east with the measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand, and once more he had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again he measured off a thousand and had me wade the water was up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high that it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river where he had had me sit down. Along the bank of the river I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, this water flows into the eastern district down by Aruba and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which makes it fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Although both banks of the water, fruit trees, and every kind of fruit shall grow, their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear much fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken, and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose run that's gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. 
Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. A clean heart create me, O God, and give me back the joy of your salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a feast of the Judeans, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate, a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, with five porticles. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Judeans said to the man who was cured, It is a Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to carry out your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you? Take it up and walk. The man who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Judeans that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Judeans began to persecute Jesus because he did this on the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know that many Catholics have been disturbed lately, um, amongst many things going on in the world, but a recent survey came out talking about how many Catholics do not believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. I know this made a lot of people very, very upset because they they love the Eucharist. They hunger for the Eucharist. Now, even more, since the Eucharist is not really available to them uh, these days during this pandemic. And it's important for us to feel that hunger for the, for the Eucharist and to realize what a great gift it has been to us. And sometimes we've taken it for granted, having it available to us at all times. And now, in a sense, it's been taken away from us. So hopefully this will teach us the importance of that sacrament and maybe even help us to appreciate it even more. But it's also important to realize you can believe in the real presence of the Lord and not know the Lord. You can believe that Jesus is truly present in the, in the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity. That's great. That's wonderful. That's important. But also it's important, do you know the Lord? Do you have a relationship with the Lord? Is the Lord a part of your life? Does he walk with you every day, every minute? Do you talk to him as a friend, as a Lord, as a Savior? Today's gospel, we hear about this poor sick man who was sick for 38 years. And Jesus goes up to him and asks asks him a very strange question. The question was, sir, do you want to be well? And I think to myself, how how it it would be if I would go into a hospital room to visit a sick person and ask them that question. Do you want to get well? I would think they would think, are you crazy? I want to get well, Father. I want to get out of this hospital. I want to be home with my family and friends. Why did he ask him that question? And my, I have a sense that maybe this man didn't want to get well. Some people, as Father O'Donnell, Monsignor O'Donnell, who's the pastor of the cross, used to say, some people enjoy bad health. And sometimes they do that because they don't want to have the responsibility of being well and doing what they're supposed to be doing. They always have the excuse, I don't feel good, or I'm ill, I'm sick. And this apparently is what this man was all about. But despite his inability to want to take responsibility, Jesus still offers him healing. He didn't have faith in Jesus. He didn't know who Jesus was, but Jesus gave it to him freely, just like that water coming out of the temple in the first reading. The grace of God, the mercy of God just flows freely over all of us. Sometimes people think that God's love is just reckless, going to all those who are most even undeserving. 
And so it's important for us to understand that, my brothers and sisters, that this Jesus is an incredible, incredible um, person who comes to us as the Son of God, who comes to us to reveal to us how close God is in our life, and that he comes to fulfill the fact that God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in our distress. Therefore, we fear not, though the earth be shaken, and it's shaking now, and the mountains plunge into the depths of the sea, the Lord of hosts is with us. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And as we believe truly in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, that we also know him, grow closer to him, and allow him to heal us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now present our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. First of all, we pray for our church, the people of God, especially those who are in leadership, that the Lord will help them during this difficult time to pray hard and to help the church grow in its knowledge and love of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world leaders that they stop bickering, they stop fighting one another, but work together to bring relief to those who are in most need during these days, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for them, those who seek our help, that the Lord will touch them with his healing power, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of our sick, our suffering, especially those who are suffering under this terrible pandemic. We ask the Lord to relieve them and to bring relief to the whole world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our deceased relatives and friends and benefactors, that God may grant them eternal peace and happiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer this Mass for Catherine McQuaid, John Belsky, Rosemary Mummy, and Carol Dybeck. And all the petitions that we brought here for ourselves and on behalf of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to believe in his power to save us as we present our petitions to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread that we offer you. Through the earth, work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mysterious water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine that we offer you. Through the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit, contrite heart, be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as our creator, for this is our mortal life and may affect us in healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our self-sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your sons and daughters. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may rejoice to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies, and now likewise in times to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you, and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you for coming and uh, joining us at Mass. Again, when I receive the Eucharist, I extend that blessing that I receive to all the people of Holy Cross and to all those who are watching on, on this um, on this uh, TV show, or not TV show, but this broadcast. We ask the Lord to bless you with uh, with this Mass. And again, um, uh, again, pray hard that uh, this uh, pandemic will come to a swift end. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May all the peace, the power, and the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is now ended. Go in peace to love, to trust, and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.